been pulled out of the cycle called the ecological secession. So these endangered species that are put on this, this national pre pre protected list, but why is this done? It's done because every species on God Earth has a role to play in our environment. <laughs> Did you know that certain types of species keep our waterways healthy, keep our vegetation fresh, and, and, and keep diseases from, from creeping up in our society? That, that, that man has to figure out some type of formula that it can come up with to kill whatever disease that are creeping in. You got to follow along with it. You got to, you're going to miss it this morning if you're not paying attention. Now, when these species become extinct, disease set into the environment and create challenges for our society. Challenges, great challenge. This is why nationally as well as internationally, we must do everything we can to protect these endangered species. There is another species in this human race. It's called the, the human, you see. That's you. If you didn't know it, uh, that's you. Uh, there's another endangered species in that world. Who is it? Someone needs to say, that's me. That is, that, that is you. And this species is different from all other species on the earth. When God created this species called the, 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 the human, he gave to them a soul that no other species was granted. Let the church say amen. 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 He granted a, a soul and, and this species was created. I'm not talking about the, the panthers. I'm not talking about the, the white whales. But, but this species called the human race that was created to worship. That's right. It was created to worship. Now you may have gotten lazy this morning and decided I'm going to watch this on YouTube. You, you may have gotten lazy this morning and decided you ain't coming up in here. But I want you to know this morning that, that scratch everything else in your life. Forget about everything else in your life. Your number one reason for being on planet Earth was to offer up to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords worship. This morning, God is looking. God is looking for some endangered species. This morning, God is looking for some true worshipers as he as he visits this church uh, and churches all over this world. He recognized that there is a major shortage of worship that the angels have already reported on it. The Spirit of God is walking to and fro looking for the worshipers because of the worshipers because she yeah. it's all over people of God. It's all over so the problem exists. Some 2,000 years ago, of the shortage of worshipers. See, even the disciples didn't understand the people of God. Even the disciples could not fathom it. Why do you think Jesus sent the disciples where? <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Where did Jesus send the disciples? Where did they go? They went to get something to eat. Do you think, do you think that that happened by some happenstance? But even the disciples did not understand this kind of worship that Jesus was talking about. Yeah, yeah. So he sends them to lunch because Jesus was about to break ground on a whole new ministry, a whole new mission field yeah. because Jesus was about to introduce to the Samaritans, uh, to the Samaritans and Jews and, and Samaritans did not rub shoulders together, did not hang out. No. But Jesus went deep into this woman's life. Mm. And he saw the great potential, perhaps, that he's seeing this very day. He saw the very 
potential of what worship, of what a real worshiper can be. Someone once said, uh, why is he, why is he talking uh, to this adulterous woman? Why is he talking uh, to this woman that had five husbands that wasn't even living? Why is he communicating that? Because Jesus saw the potential of a true of a true, of a true worshiper. And this morning, people of God, he see your potential. Your potential is greater than your, your mind can fathom. But it's time that you recognize that you are an endangered species. And that if you don't start a worshiping him, if you don't start multiplying yourself and showing others how to worship him, we will become extinct. Jesus introduces this to the Samaritan woman while drawing water from the well. She did not understand at all. A Jew and a Samaritan there. Jesus came to Samaria for one major purpose. He came to Samaria for one major purpose. You see, scientists that understand the significance of the ecosystem, understand the significance of these special species that God put on the earth, they do, they take drastic measures. Uh, they go into the Everglades, they go into various places, and, and they grab these endangered species, and, and they put them in an environment, an environment where they can mate and, 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 uh, and reproduce so that there will be other species like them. Yeah. The tragedy today, people of God, is that we are not reproducing ourselves. Yeah. The tragedy today, people of God, when we call for street ministry and outreach, the tragedy today, people of God, that God is looking for some dangerous species. Yeah. And there's concern that when it comes down to worship, everything else stops. He's looking for, he's looking for, he, he's searching the, the room today. Uh, he's searching the owls today. He's looking for another one of his endangered species that he can pull out, that he can pull out, that he can convince you uh, to multiply yourself, to, to multiply yourself, to multiply yourself and show others what it is, what it means to worship. What it means to worship. So he came to Samaria, one of the major purposes. He came there to transform the life of a woman and a, a woman who had been confused, you see. A woman who had been abused, you see. A, a woman has been that have been used and, and misused. But deep down inside of our Savior and Lord, he saw a potential worshiper. And it meant getting rid of all the religious folks sending the disciples away so that he can do, do true ministry yeah. with this Samaritan woman. Yeah. You see, when God looks at you, he not only sees you, but he sees the multiplications of, of hundreds and thousands of people multiplication of hundreds and thousands of people that he will use your life, he will use your life, he will use your life, he will use your life to introduce others to worship, yeah. to worship. Why is it we so often are encouraging you, you bring others to worship? For the word of God says, go into the highways and the hedges and compel others to come into the house of the Lord. Worshippers, worshippers, what is all about worshippers? You talk to scientists that are obsessed with these endangered species. In fact, their obsession is so great they could care less about the human race of people. They're only concerned about these particular species because they study them. They, they looked on the microscopes and stethoscopes. They, 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 they examine uh, they examine these species and they know the great role that they play in our ecosystem. 
Worshippers begin in the depths of a person's heart. And worship has a way to overflow into every area of life, bringing in blessings and joy to those around us. Amen. Worship is contagious, you see. If I, if I had enough time here today, worship is contagious that, that when people see true worship, there is something about it. There is something about true worship because others that desire it begin to connect to it, connect to it. We spend 30 minutes usually on Sundays in worship, uh, seeking to get individuals and to get the church to connect with God, connect with God. Worship is one of those activities that we as Christians know we ought to be doing. One reason we get confused about worship is that we tend to limit worship to one hour on Sunday morning. And if you that's all the worship you got, my brother, my sister, you have missed your mark. Because worship doesn't just start right here, you see. Worship doesn't start right here. Uh, in fact, right here, this is just an hour of celebration. This is just an hour of, of celebration. But your worship, your worship should be 24 hours a day, Amen. seven days a week. You worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes. We limit it. We can't limit it to just Sunday. We can't limit it to Sunday because there's significant power. There's significant strength in our time of worship. Yes. In our time of worship. One reason we get confused about it because we, 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 we limit it. But what Jesus was teaching in John 4 is that God's presence, uh, and this is the, the, the school uh, that he took the Samaritan woman down. But I want to take you down for just a few minutes here. This is the school of teaching uh, that he took the Samaritan down. He, he took the Samaritan down and he showed the Samaritan that God's presence is no longer confined in a temple. Uh, God's presence is no longer confined in, in, in a mountain. In a, yeah. in a mountain. He now lives in the people of God. Yeah. In the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. 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 His presence lives in the people of God. Yeah. Now, 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 why do you think? Why do you think that is so significant? That means that worship is not so much where you are. Worship is who you are. You are a species created by God. Oh, worship. Worship. Worship needs to break out of here. Somebody needs to get the spirit of the Lord to worship. Somebody needs to drop to their knees and say, Lord God, I worship you. I worship you. Yeah. There, there's a big difference. Mm. You see, private worship 
It's a worship that I do at home. Uh, uh, private worship causes you to get so excited that you want to go into public worship with the people of God. Yeah. A spirit and truth worshiper worship the Lord daily and look forward to it. You see, when we can stop and forget about ourselves and reflect on Him. You see, a worshiper knows it ain't about me. It's about Him. It's about Him. You see, that when we can learn sometimes to call a time out to ourselves, Say self, listen to me right now. Repeat that. Self. Self. Time out. Time it's out. time to worship. Time it's time to worship. worship. You know, all the self stuff, and it's all the, the, the self stuff yeah. Yeah. that matches everything up. Yeah. That matches everything up. If you didn't have clothes in your back, shelter, or food, still the number one reason why you were put on this earth is to worship. Yeah. It's a worship. It's a worship. You know, I, 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 I'm amused by the, the panther. Amused by the, the Florida panther. It's on the endangered species list. They say that there is only, only just so many of these Florida panthers left. If you live out here in the the western part of, of South Florida, every now and then you'll have an encounter with some of these uh, endangered species. And you can come out of here sometimes when I'll be in the church two, three, and four o'clock in the morning. And, and I see things that all I think about is that I got my keys in my hand, <laughs> my door is almost open, and I'm getting up out of here. Amen. <laughs> I mean, I've seen some stuff. I've seen some dogs that look like dogs with these real fuzzy tails behind them. I, I don't know much about foxes, but I do know that you don't want to mess with them. So I get in my car, I don't even try to get close to examine it for myself. I just get on up out of here. They're out of here, they're out of here, they're out of here. They're on the endangered species list. And, yeah. and let me just give you a warning, let me just give you a warning that they have more protection under them than you. <laughs> then you don't no, no, no more out and try to capture one of them. Uh, you will get yourself in a lot of trouble. Leave those endangered species yeah. alone. But recognize who you are. That you are an endangered species as well. And the enemy has convinced you that your role in this life is not important. The enemy has convinced you that your past is holding you back. As a Samaritan woman, she had been convinced that because of her past, because of her sins, because of the issues and all of the problems that, that life has dealt with her, that she could not be part of the family of God. But God showed her as she confessed her very own sins before Jesus himself. That Jesus brought her to the point of, of recognizing, recognizing who he was and the significance of being a worshiper. When we start to forget about ourselves and reflect on him, who he is, what he is, what he has done, what he promised that he would do, what he brought you from, what he brought you through, and where he will take you. Then all you can do is worship God and to worship him. Yes. Amen. A great great theologian of yesteryears by the name of A.W. Dozer said, We are called to be an everlasting, an everlasting preoccupation with God. Amen. That's a significant calling on your life. That's, that's worship. That's worship. And, and David was devoted. One of the significant things about David, I've done enough of reading about David, and the more I get 
I, I, I dip down into, in, into the life of David and to see David's life that he was devoted to private worship. The absence of public worship is the absence of private worship. You see, perhaps uh, the, the church, even though with the weather, the atmosphere, condition right now in this world, but if there were much private worship going on last week, there would be greater public worship here today. Amen. But David was devoted to private worship in Psalm 27, verse 4. He said, one thing I ask of the Lord, that is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to seek Him in the temple. That's worship. That's worship. That's, that's worship. <clears throat> and he goes on, he says, and he talks about what it means to be in the, in the presence of the Lord, what it means to be in worship, what it means to, to be involved in, 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 in private worship. He said, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns even faith for the court of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cries out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and then they swallow a nest for herself where she, where she may have her young a place near your altar. Oh Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in the house. They are praising you. Yeah. Worshippers are endangered yeah, yeah. species. And now we come into, we look at corporate worship. That's us coming together. We look at corporate worship. That's on, on Sundays and, uh, and, and Wednesday nights. That's corporate worship. Our corporate worship should be the results. Again, a much private worship. Let's say that one more time. Say that one more time. Our corporate worship must be the results of much Private worship. Private worship. Private worship brings you into corporate worship. The absence of corporate worship can easily be contribute to the lack thereof of private worship. Why some go to church, someone once said. Some go to church to just take a walk. Some go to church to make a friend or look for a friend or significant other. Some go to church just to burn just a little bit of time. Some go to church to cover up their faults and their deficiencies. Some go to church to, to, to clear up uh, uh, their speculations and other speculations. Some Go to church for just simple observations to see how many showed up, see how many are there. Some go to church just to doze off, doze off, and nod in one of those in the house today. Some go to church just to take a, 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 a simple nap. But the Bible tells us, but those who have been, been deemed to be a worshiper comes and they come to worship him in spirit and in truth and go to church to worship God. But there is a shortage of the human species on this earth that have required that the kingdom of God declare them endangered species. There is a declaration, there is a call from heaven to to pull out the endangered species among us today. To pull them out and, and to put them in a place where they can habitat, where they can reproduce themselves, where they can be part of generating other worshipers. Today God is seeking to find some new worshipers this morning. Could it be you? Could it be you? Could it be you, you, or you? God is looking for some true worshipers today. God is looking for you. God is looking for 
for you. Because if something is not done, that if something doesn't change, people will come. That this world will out there be more unbelievers. There will be so many unbelievers in this world that have no commitment, no desire to worship God. That the, that the unbelievers will dominate, the unbelievers will take over, and there will not be any room for true worshipers. We live in a society today, people of God. We live in a society today, people of God. That everywhere you turn, that their religious rights are being challenged. Yeah. We live in a society today, and even internationally, that there are, there are, there are, there, 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 there are, there, there, there are some countries that you can't even carry around a Bible. There, there are some countries in this uh, world that we're living in that, that you can't uh, worship Him. You get caught worshiping Him. You get killed. There, there are some countries, people of God, that, that true worshipers are indeed an endangered species. There are some countries where you can't find godly people because there's an absence of endangered species. There's an absence of, 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 of worshipers. So I stopped by this morning to encourage, to encourage you, to encourage you to recognize that God has created you for worship, to recognize that God requires your worship, to recognize the significance of why your creator created you. And perhaps you don't have the issues that the Samaritan woman had, but with all of her issues, with all of her sin, with all of the, the, the problems and situations that she brought to Jesus, Jesus still welcomed her and introduced her to the worshiper. So what's your excuse today? What's your excuse today? You know, I, I learned that, that, that even when we're not faithful, but when the chips are down, we still look to him. That even when we've not done what we're supposed to do, when your chips are down, when your pink slip has been issued, when your, 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 your foreclosure notice has come to pass, you still look to him. How is, it, how is it that we only look to him when the chips are down? Yeah. You weren't created to be that way. So what's, what's in the way? Let the church say, what is in the way? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. Because again, as, I, as I've already established, science is that that focus on the ecosystem. They are fanatics about those species because they know the role that they play. They know why they were created. Well, God himself is fanatic about worship. Our God loves worship. There is absolutely no excuse man can come up with that will stop him from worshiping. How can you declare war with your own creator? It doesn't make any sense. While many try, that's no fight. There's nothing that you want to get into. There, 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 there's nothing you want to be part of. But God is seeking to find some new worshipers this morning. All right. Could it be you? Yeah. God wants you to Amen. take the place and make it your business today. Yeah. That I'm going to reach out and disciple others to worship Him. Yeah. I'm going to reach out and I'm going to tell the people on the job to worship him. I'm, yeah. I'm going, to, going to reach out and, and, and meet with my family and get them to worship him. Yeah. You see, in the Samaritans, in this Samaritan woman household, prior to her encounter with Jesus, 